Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast. Sons of Western Armenia, Gevork Javakian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. An open letter from representatives of the Armenian community to the Czech Republic to the leadership of the country. Deliberate starvation of civilians is a war crime. The situation in Artsakh was also discussed at the UN. The international community must act together so that Aliyev ends the blockade of the Berzo Road. Frank Palud, how Ahal Kalak will appear at the Pan Armenian Games in 2023. Remarkable events of Hamshan Armenians. Gevork Javakian's message posted on the social network a day before he went into service surprised everyone after his death. I don't want to share my plans. All I can say is that soon you will hear my name louder. That's how his name sounds today, loud and clear, after heroically immortalizing himself for the homeland. Gevork was a real tanker, as commanders described him. Although he always wanted to become a communication officer, he began his service in the Armavir military training unit as a tanker and continued in the Hojalu military tank unit. Both at school and in the military unit at a young age, everyone was delighted with his bright image. Because of his difficulties in expressing himself, Gevork used to put his whole sensual inner world on paper and draw pictures in blank and white. He was very close to art and addition to painting. He was also involved in music. He was one of the first members of the Beatbox Federation in Armenia. It was thanks to beatboxing that he was then invited to star in one of the Yas series, from which he began his acting career, says his sister Seda. The blue-eyed, grey-haired Gevork had already become a crowd favorite by the age of 19. They couldn't walk quietly with Gevork in the street. Everyone knew each other, approached, talked and took photos. During the service before the 44-day war in 2020, he was already on the front line during the incidents in Tavush, and afterwards he only told the family. Throughout the 44-day war, he did didn't tell his family to which part of Artsakh he had been transferred. On October 23, Gevork was transferred to Garmin Shuka. After that, he called her sister's husband and told him, If anything happens to me, you'll take good care of my sister and my roommates. Seda says that once when talking to her brother, she said she prayed for him every day, but Gevork corrected her that she should pray not only for him but for all soldiers. During the war, Gevork destroyed an enemy tank and hit several types of armored vehicles. However, on October 24, an enemy drone spot Gevork's tank and hit it, seriously wounding him Gevork conscious in hospital for several days. On October 28, Gevork Javakian became immortal and, as he had intended, made his name loud and clear for all to hear. In the spring of 1878, the Anglo-Russian war was almost a reality. Alexander II was sure that Britain was looking for an excuse to declare war on Russia. Sending Shuvalov to the Congress, he said, Count Shuvalov, remember, you are responsible for peace. The Tsarist government appealed to Bismarck to call a Congress in order to get Russia out of this dilemma, to go to war against England and Austria or to retreat unconditionally. The Israeli declared that it was necessary to turn the Armenian province provinces into military fortresses in order to concentrate Turkish troops there against Russia. In Britain, contrary to its traditional policy, forces the Ottoman Empire to reform, then the Turks will certainly oppose and at the same time reapproachment with Russia. Before the summit began, Britain managed to identify the list of issues to be discussed and the most likely options for their solution. Moreover, the Berlin Assembly would give the appearance of treaty legitimacy to Britain's previous decisions. By demanding reforms, Britain was not acting in the interest of the peoples under Ottoman rule, but its control over reforms was a weapon to dictate its will to the Ottoman Empire at any time. The scope of the issues discussed at the summit was was the problem was to re-examine the Eastern question according to the new realities, to review the Treaty of San Stefano, and to do so not according to the role and situation played by one side or the other in the war, but according to the economic, political, and military interests of all the countries participating in the assembly. The main conflict in Berlin Berlin was between England and Russia. Disraeli retorted, We came here from England to settle the affairs of the Sultan and give him the full opportunity to exercise his power in the Ottoman Empire. 
Representatives of the Armenian community in the Czech Republic have sent an open letter to the country's leaders, excerpts of which we present below. The people of Artsakh are victims of the political plans of Baku and its number one ally, Turkey. The policy of forcing an entire nation to leave its territory is once again being implemented, which is comparable to genocide and clearly contradicts the United Nations Charter and the Declaration of Helsinki. Despite these double standards, threaten European democracy as Europe remains a victim of its energy dependence on Azerbaijan. On the one hand, dependence on Russia gas is criticized. On the other, dependence on the gas or oil of the dictator Aliyev is encouraged. We call on the Czech Republic, guided by democratic and humanitarian values, to react as quickly as possible and ask the Baku government to prevent the humanitarian catastrophe and force displacement of 120,000 civilians from Artsakh from continuing and to open the road linking Goris to Artsakh. Otherwise, the citizens of Artsakh, the ethnic Armenians will be subjected to another genocide. The letter was also sent to Czech media. The International Committee of the Red Cross is unable to carry out its humanitarian mission in Artsakh, and starving the civilian population is a war crime that must not go unpunished. These statements were made at the UN Security Council, where diplomats from dozens of countries met late on August 3 at Washington's initiative to discuss ways of preventing hunger and ensuring security in war situations. Representatives from a number of countries, including Switzerland and France, while speaking of hunger, deprivation, and suffering due to Moscow's policies, also recalled the eight-month humanitarian crisis in Artsakh caused by Baku blocking of the Berzer Road. In addition to eliminating the challenges facing the planet, the diplomats also urged that supplies to Artsakh and the right to free movement for the people living there be ensured. We are faced with a situation where mothers can't find food for their children, others can't find medicine for seriously ill relatives, said Vahe Gevorkian, deputy foreign minister of the Republic of Armenia, who took part in the meeting along with foreign colleagues. U.S. Congressman Frank Powell has welcomed the U.S. Secretary General's stance on the humanitarian crisis in Artsakh. Frank Powell made a note to this effect in his Twitter microblog responding to U.S. Secretary General Antonio Gautron's statement regarding the situation in Artsakh following Baku's blockade of the Berzo Road. I am pleased that U.S. Secretary General Antonio Gautron admitted that there is a humanitarian crisis in Artsakh. Now the international community must work together to ensure that Aliyev ends the blockade of the Berzo Road the road and allows aid and essential goods back into Artsakh, wrote Palun. The All Armenian Games 2023 sports event in the Republic of Armenia, 57 athletes from Ahal Kalak municipality will participate and compete in eight sports events. The delegation representing Ahal Kalak region of Javakh consists of 65 people. Ahal Kalak will participate in the All Armenian Games in the following sports running race, four people, arm wrestling, four people, swimming, six people, chess, seven people, table tennis, five people, volleyball, 11 people, football, 20 people. The All Armenian Games will start on August 5, 2023 and will last 15 days, with the opening ceremony in the city of Gyumri. Sports competition will be held in other cities. Hamshen's Armenian intellectuals, in particular the editorial staff of the Gore magazine and the leaders of the Hatik Trade Union, continue to organize remarkable events as reported by Akunknet. According to the source, in August this year they decided to organize a series of events in the Ardwin provinces, Hopa and Kemal Pasha provinces, which are heavily populated by Hamshen Armenians. As part of the series of cultural events entitled Make Mezi, concert will be held near the Makrial Church near Kemal Pasha province and in the town of Hopa. The rock band Melusis will perform commemorative songs. The series of scientific and cultural events open to the public also include seminars and lectures on the themes of Hamshen and the Armenians of Hamshen. Speakers include the renowned Armenian Hamshen director Ozjan Alper, one of the leaders of the Hatik Trade Union, Hikmet Akchichek, and the author of books on the Hamshen Armenians, Mahir Ozgan. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Gadara 